Take two. Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Um, here to do another list. Uh, like I did the, the modern progressive art rock list, um, albums list. Doing it on a Rate Your Music page. I might be doing it on the blogs. I put some of the stuff in my blog. First time I've been posting a blog in a long time. But um, So Led Zeppelin were my first favorite band before I got into Rush or Pink Floyd or Dream Theater. Marillion, uh, a lot of these bands. <clears throat> Zeppelin were the first classic rock band I loved. Anyway, I did a... The Dream Theater forums are doing a bunch of, you know, rankings like they did with Fate's Warning. I'm not participating in them, but I decided I would just do my own. And I actually have a topic I created for these lists. It's not just because... Just with lists they're doing the polls. It's just my own list. And, you know, like the Kevin Gilbert list is going to be coming. But this one's quick because I know Zeppelin pretty damn well. You know, they only have a certain amount of albums. They only have, like, whatever is it, eight or nine albums. Um, and, yeah, I know their track list. So, anyway, let's just kind of go through this quickly. Number 40, I did the top 40. They're doing top 40. And then I'll show the album mention. I'll go over that quickly after that. Trample it Underfoot from Physical Graffiti. Number 39, Southbound Soiree or Suarez from In Through the Outdoor. I really love that song. I love that. a lot of songs on that album. Number 38 from the self-titled debut album, Your Time Is Gonna Come. Uh, great sort of folky ballad. Number 37, uh, The Crunge uh, from Houses of the Holy. A song I didn't like right away, but uh, Houses of the Holy was the first album I bought from them. And kind of grew on me. It's a weird song, but it, it kind of, it, 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 it really, it still works. It ends up working. Um, that confounded bridge, of course, you know. Led Zeppelin 3's uh, song, Since I've Been Loving You, a great, great blues rock banger. Um, number 35, Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? Um, the B-side from Immigrant Song was supposed to be on Led Zeppelin 3, I guess, but there were reasons why it didn't. I know Led Zeppelin 3 was written on the road, so maybe they weren't fully happy, happy with it. Um, and then it came out, I believe, on the box set, in the, the remasters box set. Um, that's the first time, like, I didn't know it for being a B-side of <coughs> Immigrant Song, but anyway. Number 35, Number 34, In the Evening, from In Through the Outdoor. Another great, that's the first track I live on, In, the, on in Through the Outdoor. Um, number 33, Gallows Pole, from Led Zeppelin Three. Another kind of great, folky, you know, it's a ballad. I don't know if you'd call it a ballad. Gallows Pole is, of course, like a Tolkien reference, like a, a few different songs they did. So anyway, uh, dreamy, very dreamy. A lot of songs on Zeppelin Three are dreamy. Anyway. Number 32, Out on the Tiles from Led Zeppelin 3. Out on the Tiles and Immigrant Song are like the two like heavier tracks. Remember when I got into Zeppelin 3, this was like the sort of, it was, it stuck out in a way, but in a good way. It's like, well, you want a heavier track from Zeppelin 3, you go right to Out on the Tiles. Almost like Jeff Buckley's um, song, uh, Eternal Life. That's a really heavy track, and a lot of the songs on Grace are not heavy. But anyway, Out on the Tiles from number 32 from Zeppelin. Um... I mean, it's not super heavy, but it's it's a little heavier, more electric than a lot of the Zeppelin three stuff. Uh, number thirty one, Days of Confused, well loved, well influential. The the version that's on, of course, um, song remains the same. The uh, the film is like thirty two minutes or whatever. My friend in high school, we watched that film together, and he was just like dreading having to sit through a <laughs> long of a piece. But it's great. It's a very bad. Very heavy riff. It might be Zeppelin's heaviest song, actually. That do no no do no no, you know, um, almost like early doom metal in a way. Anyway, Days and Confused, number thirty one, number thirty, Houses of the Holy, which was a B side of In My Time of Dying. Um, I like this song, meh. We're doing the the sort of pub meeple track rank because I think it beat out some other songs. I don't know if I would necessarily feel like it belongs this high compared to some of the songs even on the honorable mentions, but I've still always liked it. I you know that album itself is my favorite. You know, I'm kind of spoiling the uh, the rankings, but if I do an album ranking, but anyway, still a good song, of course, the song title after the song, the album before it. But anyway, um, number 29, Good Times, Bad Times from the, the, the debut album, one of their first singles. Great, catchy pop tune in a lot of ways. Catch, like very energetic, very great lyrically, got a good sort of uplifting message. Um, anyway, you know, it's a sort of a like story. I mean, is it most uplifting? I don't know. It may be kind of dark in some ways, but I like it. It's an uplifting sounding song, at least. Anyway, number 28, The Ocean. At one point, maybe was my favorite Zeppelin song. When I got um, Houses of the Holy, or Houses of the Holy, when I got, yeah, Houses of the Holy, 
this was like, oh, it ends with that great sort of dun, 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 dun. the riff is great. It's very energetic, very playful. I still like it. It's it's kind of worn a little bit over time for me, but I still like it anyway. Number twenty seven, Travel, Traveling Riverside Blues, uh, which is a single off that box set that got really famous. Um, very cool, jangly blues rock tune. Uh, which you know, why again? That one was one on the album. That's another thing. I don't know if that was from like the Yardbirds days. And it's, a lot of these songs, of course, were derived and borrowed from blues artists, including Robert Johnson. But that tune, I'm sure, was one of them. Anyway, it's Zeppelin's version is still really good. Number 27. Number 26, another one of the bangers off of uh, Physical Graffiti, the Wanton song. Heavy riff. Uh, just, oh, man. Dun, 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 dun. It's, oh, it's just so, it's so good. It's so good. Um, I can't say much more. If you want a really head-banging song, really, like, guitar-driven like just punchy riff that wanton song is among their best uh, number 26 number 25 no quarter from house of the holy a lot of people a lot of the prog fans especially rate this higher i do get reminded of pink floyd um hope we're not going to get problems from this thing um from the from that track of course john paul jones is featured on it with like a mellotron it's dreamy it's trippy it's very epic in a lot of ways you know i i like zeppelin at their best when they're very energetic but this is one of their ballads that still works for me a lot in a lot of ways. It's just not as much as some of the others. Anyway, No Quarter, number 25. Number 24, Nobody's Fault But Mine from Presence. Another song I think kind of did well in my comparison game. Um, it was a radio song that I got a little sick of, but I still like. And among the Presence record, it's probably my number two and number three song. So it kind of by default had to win over and end up pretty high. So number 24, Pre uh, Nobody's Fault But Mine from the, al the Presence album. Number 23, That's the Way, another great acoustic ballad from Led Zeppelin III. Um, some ways the most underrated ballad. A lot of people talk about Tangerine, some of the other tracks from that record. Friends, Celebration Day. I, I love That's the Way. It's a great track uh, from Zeppelin III. Number 22, Immigrant Song, another Zeppelin III. Of course, that's the banger. People got to know it with uh, School of Rock, of course. Heavier for Zeppelin III. One of their heaviest, more, you know, it's just very energetic. It's, the riff is right in your face. Immigrant song number 22. Number 21, Tangerine, I was just talking about. And, you know, it's like splitting hairs between that and that's the way. Tangerine, I think, and it was used on, like, in like Almost Famous, I think, which is ironic because the Stillwater band is sort of based on Zeppelin. Um, it's a just a great melodic kind of twangy, um, whimsical. People use the word whimsical lights. Tangerine is a fun, you know, kind of harmless tune. And it's uplifting. Like a lot of, a lot of songs on Zeppelin 3 are uplifting. So anyway, number 21, number 20, Sick Again, another heavy riff banger. Um, you know, Physical Graffiti is filled with them, you know. it. I guess it's grown on me more over the years. Initially, when I got into that album and I got that album, I probably overlooked it because it was toward the end of the second side, but um, I love Sick Again. Sick Again, you know, I wish more people talked about it. Anyway, number 20, Sick Again from Physical Graffiti. Uh, another Physical Graffiti track, number 19, Cashmere. A song that kind of got worn out a little bit by a lot, like a lot of their songs by radio, but it's still I'm in awe of it. At one point, I was just I think it was the greatest song ever written and recorded. Um, Kevin Gilbert had something to say about that, but um, his version. But it's it's dreamy, it's mystical, Middle Eastern, of course. The lyrics are sort of poetry as opposed to sort of giving some sort of literal, you know, like profound message. Um, it's very much an escapist song. And it's kind of prog. It's the, one of their most proggy tracks in a lot of ways. Anyway, trippy track, Cashmere, from Led Zeppelin, even as much as it got played on the radio. Number 18 from Led Zeppelin 4, Four Sticks. Great rhythm. The, the energy's great. It just, it's hard to forget. It's very earwormy. Dun, 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 you know? And over overshadowed by so many other songs off that record. I, I think it's better than most of the songs on that record, actually. It's up in four. So anyway, four sticks, number 18, the B-side for rock and roll. Much better than rock and roll. Number 17, Night Flight. Uh, one of Physical Graffiti's catchiest tracks. Jeff Buckley even did a cool version of it, but lyrics are good. I mean, it's a little, t gets a little twangy, and the some of Plant's kind of vocal phrases are a little weird. A little kind of, my night, you know, uh, but um, I overall still enjoy it. I love the kind of the rhythm from Bonham, you know. And some of like that, you know, that inspirational uh, lyric message from a baby lady with a baby, you know. Um, yeah, I love Night Flight, you know. <laughs> think of that TV that series at night. I think they're actually bringing that back or making it accessible. 
Night Flight was like a show on one of the cable networks, which ran concerts and stuff. But I don't know if Zeppelin was ever on there. Anyway, number 16, Thank You from Zeppelin 2. I like this song. It's a great ballad. It's, it's like harmless. It's like very kind of methodical and like moving and inspirational. Um, I, I don't know if I, I, you know, how it ended up again in a comparison ga- uh, game. Why it ended up quite this high. I still enjoy it. Zeppelin 2 is a great record, of course. Um, but anyway, I can't say a lot of good things about it. I can't say a lot of bad things about it. It's just a, it's a nice message. A song that kind of brings down the sort of heavy blues rock of Zeppelin 2 and makes it more kind of somber and, um, you know, you know, kind of contemplative. Anyway, we want to thank you for this. It's a Thanksgiving tune. You know, I played that on the radio once during Thanksgiving. Anyway, number 15, Stairway to Heaven. There's not a lot more I can be said. It's it's prog rock that was done on a, uh, that got radio play. Has it been overplayed? Maybe I've never gotten gotten sick of it. Unlike a lot of Zeppelin songs, um, I get goosebumps from it and I almost go into tears every almost every time I hear it. Even though it's been played to death and been kind of it's been, it's a pun. It's almost a pun song. It's just a perfectly written song. Like it, it would go up there with a lot of the best Beatles songs where we've heard them a thousand times. But it doesn't matter. So anyway, it's in some ways their crowning achievement, just like Bohemian Rhapsody from Queen. Anyway, number 15. Number 14, What Is and What Should Never Be. It's super underrated, but I find that most people that love Zeppelin absolutely adore this song. One of the best songs on Zeppelin 2. Um, it's got that lyric, that vocal part, catch away, leave away, hey, bye, in the sky. You know, uh, That's among many parts of that song that I enjoy. That That's part of it. Plant's vocal phrasing, the vocal lines on that. Number 14. Number 13, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. One of my favorite tracks off the debut album, the Spanish guitar special and the, the driving rhythm. Dun, 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 Babe. It's all, oh, it's it's impossible to get out of my ear. I always love this song. The song, song that I got more and more into, I always love this. I wanted to learn how to play that song. I had an acoustic guitar. I bought the Zeppelin book with the tablature, but then I gave up the guitar and got a bass, and, it's, you know, more history. Anyway, number 12, The Rover. Another song at one point that I considered my favorite Zeppelin song. It's the second track on Physical Graffiti. I, I love the riff on this song. Dude, it's really like deep and it's it's heavy. It's very heavy, very powerful, very kind of almost dark, like, you know, very cool sounding. It sounds like someone who's cool would be like walking into a, it's like Fonzie, you know, the rover, you know. <laughs> um but yeah i've always loved it dream theater playing this live in that medley also kind of supplanted my love for it's like yeah they they think it's cool i i know why i liked it because i think it's cool too (laughs) anyway number 12 the rover from zeppelin number 11 bring it on home a song i did not like when i first for the first like nine months i listened to zeppelin 2 i did not like i listened to the first minute i'm like this is a pointless track why am i listening to this and then it about a minute and a half two minutes in it's got that jimmy page Freaky guitar part, you know, it's such a the riff is so good. I know it's like based on what many blues songs they they basically borrowed, but their version is so good. I love Bring It On Home. It became an all time favorite of mine. In fact, I think the number eleven might be a little low for it. <laughs> anyway, number ten, Battle of Evermore, unbelievably great. You know, ballad the the Sandy Denny uh, feature with the harmonies and the mandolin. It's just dreamy. Of course, it references like Lord of the Rings again. You know, the Tolkien stuff. Um, great piece, great great achievement. Um, like Four Sticks, the two those two songs are the ones I always go back to on four. The other tracks are very hit and miss for me because I've heard them way too many times. Number nine, the song remains the same. The first track, the first track I really ever heard from them after buying something. Such an uplifting song that the crescendo is great, you know. You know, I mean, some of the lyrics are a little weird, a little, you know, dance the hoochie coo, you know. But um, uh, it's it's epic. It's such a it's, a, it's so, such like in a major key. It's uplifting. The energy is just infectious on song remains sing. In fact, I remember playing basketball at a basketball game. One of the band, one of the teams we played in high school used this as their opening music, and I was like, I can get on board with this and a little some Zeppelin, some song remains the same. You got me. Anyway, I don't know how I well how, how well I played in that game, but it was fun to hear it while I was warming up. Number eight, Carousel Lombra, one of Zeppelin's most proggy tracks. In Through the Outdoor, of course, was an album that was largely driven by John Paul Jones and uh, a lot of the keyboards. Um, this is Zeppelin using keys maybe at their finest. Uh, it's you know it's almost Zeppelin doing yes in some ways, but it's a great piece. I, it took a while for me to get into it, but I, when I got into it, I went to- totally fell you know head over heels for it. Love Carousel Lombra. Anyway, number eight. Number seven, 
how many more times one of the best you know closing pieces that don't 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 and the the, the little distorted guitar uh little robert anthony wants to come and play i mean i love how many more times one of my if not my favorite track on that debut album i at one point maybe th- consider this my favorite song because it just is so good the flow it's so perfect on this song heavy at t- points bluesy at points the vocal rain arrangements little robert anthony wants to and i always think <laughs> uh anyway number six ten years gone unbelievable guitar solo especially from i get goosebumps it's such a sad guitar solo um dun, 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 dun. i don't know anyone any zeppelin fan who doesn't like this song like didn't like to love this song um i have a huge soft spot in fact again it's all these songs like that and the song remains the same are a little low for me or bring it on home <laughs> but yeah 10 10 years gone number five over the hill and far away a, a song i loved right away uh off of house of the holy and then kind of forgot about and then came back to one day i know this song got on the radio a lot but not as much as some of the other songs i never got sick of it i many have i love <laughs> you know the the um do, 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 do. i actually wanted to learn how to play this one too this is the one that maybe i wanted to learn how to play most the fast picking that do, 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 do. um love over the hills and far away um more ba- more bands need to cover that song in fact um anyway number four in the light if carousel Ombra is their most prog this is their most successful prog you know um this is an epic track that starts off the second um or side c i think side c maybe of zeppelin of physical feet i'm not sure uh i've got the vinyl but i don't know um yeah this is an epic you know if we just join hands in fact, i love the rover right away when i got physical feet and this this song soon after became my favorite but it doesn't end up number one as you'll see in a minute anyway number four in the light from physical graffiti number three in my time of dying <laughs> so as you can see which was released as a single oddly enough that's a song i'd have to admit you know i always liked it but it was a little heavy on the blues it wasn't as sort of heavy but it was heavy i don't know i kind of forgot about it i mean i always liked it but in the last, like, in revisiting some Zeppelin in the last couple decades, because this is 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago when I was getting into this stuff, I came to love it more and more and realize how badass that riff was. And so I just kind of won over and just kind of climbing the ladder. It's like, you know, you know. You know, that, that riff is just so badass. Love it, love it, love it in my time of dying. An all-time classic. Phil's Graffiti is just an unbelievable album altogether. Number two, Ramble On. It's a pop staple, but unlike some of these other Zeppelin songs like Rock and Roll and uh, Black Dog, and um, we've heard them way too many times, this song I've never grown sick of. The the bass line from John Paul Jones, you know, Round the Roll, Find My Girl, it's so catchy. Such a, It's maybe their most successful pop tune, actually. It's both rock and pop, pop rock. Maybe the greatest pop rock song ever, actually, in some ways. Anyway, ramble on from number two from Zeppelin. The number one song, Zed Zeppelin, from In the Light to this, their absolute finest achievement from a prog and like heavy prog. This is really prog metal, Achilles' Last Stand. Um, Crowning Jewel, oh, it's so good, you know. It's April morning, we told us we should go. And then that. Some of the segues, some of the dynamics are unbelievable. And it's just, it's a masterwork. I mean, it's splitting hairs. You know, this is most my, one point my favorite band. You just look at the top 10 to 15. It's just like, I could put any of these songs number one. But, you know, the Prague fan in me, the Rush fan in me, you know, the, you know, the Yes fan in me has to embrace Achilles' Last Stand as the greatest thing that Zeppelin ever did um and one of the greatest pieces of music ever written sadly the album presence was like sort of a reaction a difficult reaction to the death of robert among other things the death of robert plant's son um so i remember my the guy who was playing zeppelin for me when i was growing in high school growing up he talked about how you know presence was their most important album in some ways because they probably would have just broken up and we wouldn't have got it now you had presence then you had um in through the outdoor the, the, la- the last couple albums and then coda were zeppelin going in different directions and they it definitely affected them but they somehow through inspiration some other reason created this absolute masterpiece i mean you could say well it was their post one of their 
best post prog songs. I mean, the prog rock era. A lot of this music, the early stuff, was before prog rock really existed or whatever. I mean, you consider symphonic rock, um, Crimson, and yes, and Genesis, and you know, Pink Floyd even. Um, this song and stuff on Physical Graffiti had the most progressive rock influence in some ways because they were kind of absorbing some of those bands that their peers that had come after maybe even listened to them. So, yeah, Kelly's Last Stand is just I, I love. I love this track so much. And never, I never, you know, if I was doing a favorite songs list, inevitably would be in my top 50. It might be in my top 30. I don't know where it would be. Um, but it's whatever it is, nine minutes long or something like that. You know, when I did my uh, 40th and birthday special in Cafe I, this is one of the one track I chose, chose from Zep. I only played like five songs because they only give you an hour for the Wave project. But anyway, so I'll just kind of scan over. Like, you know, you can see some of the down by this. I love the guitar solo on that. Black Mountain Side, Fool in the Rain, I'm Gonna Crawl, the Rain Song, the rain song you know, probably could have usurped one or two of these songs. Celebration Day, Custard Pie, I used to love. Kind of been, you know, lukewarm on it. Brownie Our Stomp, you know, Live and Love and Made, you know, um, Hot Sun for Nowhere, Going to California, We're Gonna Groove, Communication, Great Drone, All My Love is a great synthesizer solo that sounds like a trumpet. Hot Dog, which is like country. When the Levee Breaks, When the Levee Breaks, Misty Mountain Hop, you know, Whole Lot of Love. Songs that radio just ruined. Dire Maker, Deer Maker, however you pronounce it. Um, you know, Hats Off to Roy Harper, T for One Lemon Song, which is the same song as The Killing Four from Hendrix. Um, you Shook Me. See, I have like Black Dog and Rock on way down here. I'm so sick of those songs. So, so anyway, give me your top 10, 20, 30, 40 Zeppelin tracks. I'd love to see them. But please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time, all you Zeppelin heads.